Good morning, students! Uh, let's try that again. Just because we're not together this morning doesn't mean you have to be rude. So let, let's try that again. Good morning, students! Ah, that was better. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here gathered together remotely to begin our first week of remote or distance learning. So we're not together in the lab today, but we are going to be spending some time together this week discussing some very important topics. First topic is, is the of, of, of utmost importance, my attire. You will notice that uh, I am wearing my Monday shirt today because it is Monday morning. Now, as to the next reason why we're not meeting together, it's because of this thing that you've probably heard a lot about in the news recently and in school called the coronavirus. So I want to take a few minutes to talk a little bit about the coronavirus before we begin our study for today. So let's look it up in a dictionary. I just so happen to have my Latin English dictionary here right next to my children's dictionary on the shelf. So let's check out the word corona. In Latin the word corona means Crown. I just so happen to have one of those with me. You've all seen one of these, I'm sure. So today I'm going to pretend to be a king wearing my crown. Now, corona, there's another connection here with crown. Perhaps you are familiar with the royal family in England, and you may have heard of real kings and queens such as our Queen Elizabeth II. Here I have Queen Elizabeth joining us here today, and she's going to share with us the crown that she is wearing that she first received during her, her coronation celebration or ceremony when she was in her early 20s when she became queen. So here we have a queen and a king, and we are both wearing our crown, which is what corona actually means. Now, why are we hearing this coronavirus, and what does it have to do with crowns? Well, I'm going to show you a picture here of the coronavirus, and the coronavirus is named that simply because of its appearance. If you look at the structure of the coronavirus, it appears to have many, many little crowns on its surface. I mean, look at these little structures. They look like little crowns, like the one that I am wearing and the one that Queen Elizabeth is wearing here. And so that's simply how it got its name, the coronavirus. Corona is also used in the science context in astronomy. Uh, the eighth grade, the current eighth grade, you may remember when you were in sixth grade, we put all of your names on the Parker Solar Probe. And the Parker Solar Probe right now is touching the corona of the sun. Why is it called the corona? Well, as some of you know, it's because during a total solar eclipse, you can see the corona, the structure around the sun, and it looks like a crown. So you hear a lot of talk about the coronavirus and, and the reason for our school being closed right now. But I want to share something else with you here as well regarding viruses in, in particular. I have another book called The Incredible Machine. Here it is, and it's all about the human body. And I want to share with you some important information about our incredible machine, the bodies that we have, and how they respond to viruses. By the way, you may recall in seventh grade, earlier in the year, we learned about viral reproduction and how viruses themselves are not living things, but they're like pirates. And you may remember the acronym, ANTS IN CARS RACE EVERYWHERE and the funny pictures that we had in class that day, and how that acronym stands for the various phases or stages in viral reproduction. The A stands for attach. 
the viruses attach to healthy cells. The I stands for inject. The viruses, which are like little Velcro balls that are attached to cells, they inject their hereditary material into a healthy cell because viruses can't reproduce by themselves. After all, they're not living things. So we've got the attach, we've got the inject, the C. The C stands for control because as you know, the virus sends its hereditary material into the nucleus of a healthy cell and the nucleus is taken over by that virus. The genetic material then manipulates the healthy cell in order to reproduce or become a factory producing more viruses. So ants in cells race. The R is for reproduce. The reproduction of viruses in that once healthy cell goes on at an exponential rate. Thousands and thousands of new viruses are produced by that single cell until such a point as we arrive at the E for explode. That healthy cell now filled with all of those thousands of viruses explodes and sends all of those viruses out into the environment to infect other people, which is why you're watching me on a computer screen today instead of being together in the classroom. We are practicing social distancing, which is to say to avoid the spread of these viruses from one of us to another, we're keeping our healthy distance from one another so that we don't contract any of these viruses and manufacture them ourselves and spread them out to others. But what I want to share with you here briefly today is the fact that our bodies, this incredible machine, is equipped with an incredible mechanism to defeat these foreign invaders these viruses. Our bodies are doing it all the time. We just don't necessarily think about it unless we get sick with the cold or the flu or something like the coronavirus. Most of us, if we are healthy, we have a very robust immune system. And part of our immune system are cells called T cells and B cells. And these B cells come from our bone marrow, and they are produced for our blood and get out into our system when needed. And our T cells come from our thyroid gland in our neck and are put into our immune system. And these cells are the first line of defense. And when our bodies sense that we've been infected by a virus or a bacteria for that matter, these cells kick into action and they are program to seek out these foreign invaders, find what makes them tick, and develop structures called antibodies. And these antibodies go into action and give our immune systems the opportunity to fight off these foreign invaders. So most of you listening to this have healthy immune systems and your T cells and B cells are going to kick into action if you even come across exposure to these viruses, this class of viruses called the coronaviruses, and your bodies themselves will fight them off and defeat the enemy. So I want you to remember that we all have these immune systems in our bodies that are going to fight off these coronaviruses and we'll be none the worse for wear. And we'll build up an immunity to them. And before you know it, we won't even be hearing about the coronavirus on the news any longer. So that's the good news. The bad news is you're going to have some homework assignments this week. And so I'm going to encourage you each day that we are apart with a little introductory video like I'm doing right now. And this video will direct you to go to Google Classroom, your Google Classroom, remember how to log on. And if you forget, just email me and I'll send you the classroom code to remind you. And from Google Classroom, I'd like you to read the assignment each day and complete it and submit it. And I will be able to communicate with you 
by way of email, each and every morning, I will be on the computer between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. to answer your questions, should you have any. So I wish you well. I hope you have fun this week doing some assignments that are a little bit out of the ordinary. And make sure you check out Google Classroom each day to see what to do. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow morning with my Tuesday attire.